We got the slash on the stand. Marzocchi bomber. 400 by 2.8 was a little soft. 450 by 2.8 was too firm, too high in the ride height at the back. So it affected the cornering. Super efficient, but a little choppy. And uh, definitely no good if you're trying to go real fast and go around corners. So I've had to wind up, give it two full turns of preload to find my ride height, which feels like it's right in between the 400 and the 450. So my theory is it's at about 425. It's the equivalent to about a 425 spring rate. People say winding the spring on, adding preload, only changes your ride height. It doesn't change your spring rate. Now that's rubbish. It definitely changes your spring rate. It makes the entire spring stiffer, for sure. I've got a 425 spring here. It's just arrived in the post. Perfect, perfect timing. I'm gonna to put to the test the theory of is a 400 with two turns of preload, is a, are you fine with a couple of turns of preload in relation to your suppleness and your control of the, of, of the bike, uh, how the spring feels with preload versus no preload at the same ride height, at the same, the same spring rate. So if I'm right and this is at around the 425, 430, then this, that's with two preload, two turns of preload, then this with no preload should give me the same ride height or minimal preload should give me the same ride height. I'll fine tune it, find that exact cornering position, that, that exact ride height, and see if I can get a more supple ride out of this with no preload than I can get out of this with two turns of preload. Again, same ride height. So, my theory is that no preload may, no preload at the exact right spring rate for you may be a little soggy off the top, but it may not. And two turns of preload may be a little choppy off the top, but may not. I don't think it is overly choppy off the top. I think once you get your spring rate, it's fine, but I don't know. So I've got to test it. So that's what we're on now. So the 400 spring on at the moment, new tires as well, E Martello, 25 at the back and Mazza at 22 at the front. So same pressures I'd run in a Maxis. Three clicks of compression on the shock. Two full turns of preload. And this is Brownie's left. Stayed up in the travel there. I reckon I've got probably two to bottom, but not actually bottoming. Woo! Uh oh, hearing a little right there. Oh, that was a bottom. At the back, for sure. So the tyres aren't quite, they don't quite have that st stable straight line control. Actually, that's not the right description. The the tyre isn't, when you get on a DHF, it holds a line incredibly. It's just super stable. It stays where you want it to stay. And it's kind of, you got to work to get it off of line, which is great when you're going through rough stuff. Whereas these tyres, you don't have to work at all to get them to point in a different direction because they're, they'll take away whichever way you're, you can be ever slightly leaning it and it'll turn. So the turning's excellent. But the they're a little soft still on that spring. The turning's excellent, but the stability of the tire, not so much. So if you want a livelier tire, most certainly. The grip seems okay so far. Up the front. My first ride on it last night was a little bit uh, seemed a little bit slick on the edges. But maybe it needs to bite in a bit and, and wear in and, and uh, release some rubber, maybe. Not too sure. But let's change that coil over and see how the 425 feels with very little preload. So same again. Three clicks of compression on the shock. Rebound stays the same for now. Uh, we're on the 425 spring now. So I've got no preload just enough to nip it up so that when the bike's unweighted, 
there's no free play between that collar and the spring. So, same track, same everything. How you going, man? So we'll see if it's, uh, see if it's any different. Bottom out pressure is actually better then. And it's certainly a little more compliant. So there may well be a lot of merit to the idea that no spring preload is better than spring preload as long as you can get your exact ride height correct. Tires are a little lively, like I said, but you know what? That grip's starting to come on, which is nice. They turn in well. Whoa, I'm off line there, but I made it through. It's all good. Plenty of pop out of the back. Doesn't feel like, oh, you go to a coil and you lose playfulness. Uh-uh. You just got to set it up correctly. Again, the tyres aren't super stable, but I think they're coming alive. I think they might be coming alive. That bottom out support might be just right with no turns of preload. The cornering felt good. The position felt good. Not as many corners there, but enough to enough to see whether i was i was high or low in comparison to where i was as in high or low in the ride height compared to the 400 with more preload but i'm going to say that it's only mild but it is more supple without being wallowy it doesn't feel wallowy on the climb it didn't doesn't feel wallowy here it doesn't feel soggy i guess i'm saying and um so Benny change of change of thought you do want less preload and closer to your correct spring rate than just accounting for a slightly incorrect spring rate with a bit of extra preload uh, and that's still relative to the curve of the bike as well if you got a bike that's uh, oh, I'd need to touch I'd need to think more before I touch on it but I think the leverage curve makes a difference as well. But let's just sit on that. So to summarize, I reckon the 400 with two turns of preload, so full preload, feels like a 425 with no preload. The 425 may be at no preload. Like it's got, a, it's got probably a quarter of a turn after, after the initial touch with no load on the spring, uh, no load on the bike. So. That's what I would call no preload. That's just set so it doesn't come loose. That feels like this at two full turns. The bottom out resistance is very similar. Very similar, ride height's the same. Feels great for ride height there. Uh, efficiency on the climbs feels the same. But it's just a little more supple with no preload. It's just a little, it's only mild, but it's definitely a little more supple with no preload. So there you go. Uh, changed my thoughts and uh, we've learned, we've all learned something. That rear shock feels good at three clicks of compression. It's not overly supple. I'm not getting more performance out of it than the uh, air shock that's come off the bike, but it's consistent and it's gonna feel the same every day and I don't have to put a shock pump on it. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna keep playing, keep tuning, see if I can find something, uh, you know, learn some more. And uh, But for now, that's a little lesson in, in spring rates and, and setting up a coil, I guess.